Okay, let's have a look at this projectiles worksheet we'll work on. There's four questions there, and another three questions in the second part there. So if you just want the answers to those, I have just done a worksheet there of answers. So question one here sort of indicates that I've started over on the uh, part A there, and also the vertical components. So at acceleration minus 9.8, velocity was zero at the start, and the space was going down minus 20. So we get that there, okay. Now based on that, Based on that, you can rearrange and find the time. If that's part A in the vertical section, the uh, horizontal motion, the range area, can come into the horizontal section there and use that range formula. And for the velocity at a certain time at, uh, at the end, you would need to do the vertical velocity, find the final horizontal velocity, put them together with vector diagram, and you'll get your total velocity and angle width. So it gives you a size and direction for that one. And uh, part two there, Show you part two answers there. Yeah, this is here, part two. Okay, part three answers. You are, I went and found the time in the vertical area and then went back into the horizontal and found the uh, initial velocity as it came off there. Question four there's your initial velocities, horizontal and vertical. There's your time, which I found in the vertical. There's your displacement, uh, which is uh, this height. Um, and then you've got question five the time. You have to double the time there because it was going up and down. And then you have to find the range and the actual altitude. So they're all in there as well. Question six is here if you want to check the answers on that. Um, initial, uh, the time has been doubled again, the initial velocity in terms of size vertically, and the combined velocity there has been given as well as an angle and a size. Question seven, sorry, question six also I should talk about what the projectile motion is doing here. So, uh, why is it a parabola? So, I would talk about the ball's horizontal velocity being constant uh, because no force is acting in that direction. Now, while that's going on, the vertical velocity is only going a constant acceleration. And the reason for that is you've got a force of gravity that's always the same size and it's always um, going downwards. So, because of that, a combined factor of having a constant horizontal velocity there but this one changing all the time, it means the combined velocity will keep changing direction. The other way you can look at this is the displacement has got a T-squared factor in there, and so that implies a parabola in the path. Question 7, quite tricky, I'm going to try and show you that in a minute, but you end up with having a velocity to start off the cricket bat, it's got a sideways one of 17.3, a vertical one of 19.8, and if you combine them, you get 26.3 metres a second here, um, at an angle of 48.9 degrees, and if the bat, uh, assuming that it's sort of uh, the half volume of the cricket bat, it's sort of the and I'm going to show you now the, uh, the working for some of those, so you want to watch the rest of those you can watch them now. So if you look at question two, you've got a hol helicopter flying at a horizontal speed of 80 there, like that, and it's at a height of 300 metres, and it's going to drop the package. So it's going to go somewhere on this package. So as I said, I tend to look at this notion of being separate, horizontal, and vertical. Uh, feel free to use columns, it keep, uh, tends to keep the idea separate. The acceleration here will be zero. Acceleration here would be minus 9.8, you can always put those in there, it's fixed. You've also found out that the initial horizontal velocity here is zero, uh, 80, sorry, and the initial vertical velocity will be zero because it has no up and down velocity to start with. We also know that it's going to go down 300 metres, so the placement is negative 300 because it's going down. Uh, the time taken for the package to reach the ground is what it's saying there. So I would come over here and find time where you've got more of the information. Um, so A, F equals VOT plus a half AT squared, and you could get into the habit here of forgetting the VO there in this particular case because it's got no positive velocity. So you get minus 300 equals a half of minus 9.8, which is minus 4.9 times 0.6 squared. So to get rid of that there, yeah. um, we just need to find the we want to rearrange that and you'll find this t square root of 300 over 4.9, so negative should cancel out. And if you're doing that, you'll get 7.8 seconds. Okay? Now, part B says, uh, calculate the horizontal displacement, the range of the package, so how far away does this land here? So we're just doing a horizontal motion here, and we'll use that formula there. And again, you can forget the half AT squared now at the end because. A is always zero here. And this time is the one thing you can transfer between the uh, different columns. So we've got 18 meters per second there, times by 7.8. So the actual range of the travel there 
So that's 626 metres. So you could round up to 630 or 6.3 by 2 metres, which is a little bit bigger. So, that's that one. So that final velocity will be a combination of two things here. It'll be velocity as it comes down horizontally plus vertically. So you've got two velocities to consider there. Now horizontally the velocity will still be going sideways at 80 metres a second. Now vertically, I'm just going to put this over here to make some room. The vertical velocity, you're going to use VT in the vertical column, which is VA plus AT. So make sure you get your values from the vertical here. So it's not needing to start with its drops vertically, that is. Uh, and it's minus 9.8 times by the time it hits the ground, which is 7.8. So 76. So minus 76.7 metres a second. That's minus. That means it's going down. So I'm going to remove the minus and put the uh, down arrow instead. So to combine those, you're going to do vector diagram. So the vector diagram there would be 80 and 76.7. That gives you the total vector there, which is velocity at that time. You're going to use Pythagoras' theorem there. A squared plus 76.7 squared. You will get 1011 meters a second. Okay? And the angle is 10 to the minus 1 of so 76.7. So that's how you do that sort of question there. The 3 says there's a ball bottom of the table is 1.5 metres high and 7 metres away. And it's going to land 7 metres away. And that ball rolls off. Find the ball's speed as it rolls off the table. So they want to find this speed here, which this time we don't know. So if you this in columns, we've got A equals 0 still. A is minus 9.8. And the information we've got this time is that it's still got a vertical velocity down, which is zero to start with, because it's rolling off the table with a sideways speed. It's going to travel horizontally 70 metres, and it's going to travel down minus 1.5 metres. So I can find the time here straight away, that's where most of the information is. S equals VAT plus a half AT squared, and again you can forget this VAT in this particular one because it's not being tied up or down. So you've got minus 1.5 equals minus 4.9 is half of 9.8 and times 5 to the square So P will be the square root of that 1.55 over 4.9 We get about 0.55 seconds okay. Now that you know the time here we should be able to work out the, um, the velocity sideways because the time can come up into here and we're trying to find VO so you should be able to use this S equals VOT formula because again that half AT squared is going to go um, because zero the A. That's not 70, actually it's 7.0. So you've got 7.0 is VO times by 0.55. So VO should be 7 divided by 0.55. Um, and that will give you a of the same side of the Just replace this in there. Okay.